Hi guys and welcome back to the channel Hail Damnits, Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you enjoy what you see and want to see more. Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to the nut cutting time as it's round 23 of the NRL season. But there has been some controversy at an NRL club as one player has been fired. So, it finally happened. The Melbourne Storm have become a record breakers and they have downed the Titans 34 points to 20 at the Seba Super Stadium on Thursday night to etch their name into the history books with a 19th consecutive win. The Storm now stand alongside the 1975 East Suburb side as the longest winning streak of all time. Uh, but they had to fight back from a 10 0 dap being down 10 0 early in the half to achieve the milestone. A powerhouse run by Titan centre Patrick Herbert set up the opening try for Greg Marziu in the third minute, and a live wire of the fullback Jaden Campbell had the Gold Coast second soon after, thanks to good work from Herbert again. A bomb by returning halfback Jamal Hogarty was tapped back by Herbert and it was jo uh, Campbell who pounced to race away for the score. Down by 10 the Storm hit back through uh, Marion Seve in the 24th minute after a great lead up work from Ryan Pappenhausen and Josh Adokar. Melbourne hits the lead four minutes later when Harry Grant surged over from dummy half, but the Titans proved they were up for the contest when Campbell flew high to catch an Ash Taylor bomb to complete his double. The last time the Storms trailed at half time was back in round eight against the Sharks when they turned an 8 0 8 6 deficit into a 40 points to 14 win. On that night, on uh, the AAMI Mark. It took them um, just six minutes into the second half to get back in front through Tom um, Eisenhurst and on Thursday night it was Cameron Munster getting over from close range in the 46 minutes again to level the scores. Pappenheisen con conversion was wide out but the Storm up by 18-16 with that successful conversion. Monster's second half performance simply used class and he finished the night with 146 meters and 19 runs along with two line breaks, one try assist, one try and 30 tackles thrown in for good measure. Pappenhausen was another shining light for the Premiers in his first game in, starting, in the starting side since returning to the field back in round 19. With the game in the balance, the Titans made a fatal error in the 57th minute when Campbell played the ball 15 metres out from his own line and there was no dummy half so Kenny Bromwich dived on the ball. Basic error, wait for the tap, don't rush. The Storm made them pay in the next set when Pappenhausen delivered the final pass for Adokar to score his 22nd try of the season. Then Adokar turn provider when he used some light stepping to burst through the titans down the left hand side and found Nico Hines in support to make it 28 points to 16 to the storm. With 10 minutes remaining, Munster left for Fita in his wake and, had a, and set up Adam Garbrew's second of the night and a club record equaling 23 tries for the season. With halfback Jerome Hughes missing after copying a high shot last week and Brandon Smith and jo Justin Ollum resting, the Storm attack look out to starts at time, but they still had enough class to etch their names into the records alongside the Artie Beatons Roosters. The Storm will look to make their records of their own when they play the Eels at the Suncar Stadium on Saturday night. The loss leaves Titans clinging on to the eighth spot, on 20 competition points, equal with Canberra who play Manly and two clearer of the Sharks, Dragons, West Tigers and Warriors, all on 18. Manly coach Des Hasler feels his team 
will benefit from a dodgy clash with the Raiders after they overcome the top absence of Tom Tobajevic to scrape a 19 points to 8 win. 19 points to 18 win. Hasler's men trailed 12 0 at half time after Canberra dominated with some committed defence but found enough of a groove to sweep home and put themselves in the top four for the time being. A 78th minute field goal for Daily Cherry Evans ended the, up the difference as uh, Chasney Nicol Kodstad scored with 30 seconds to go. While Manly are currently in 4th spot, the Roosters are also on 30 points and face the Dragons on Sunday, while the Eels sit on 28 points ahead of their clash with the struggling Cowboys the, next, well, the day before. There was late drama with Nickel Kotstadt's last ditch uh, 4 pointer with Rapana rushing through the conversion. And then the Seagulls forward Josh Schuster being simbin for a professional foul. That allowed the Raiders to advance downfield from a penalty kick, but Rapana skiffed the last ditch 2 point field goal shot. It leaves Canberra in 9th place, having missed the golden chance to move into 7th with only 2 rounds be before the finals. Nickel Klotstadt emerged on Scave in his first game since injuring his neck in round 5, playing fullback for at least 25 minutes. The custodian didn't have a happy entrance to the match, however, spilling the ball in his first carry from a kick return and allowing Manly the opportunity to draw level in the next set. The willing Raiders were led by a front row of Joseph Tarpany, who had an immense first 30 minute stint with 107 meters from 11, no sorry, from 12 carries. And it was a one on one strip from Tarpenny on Suli that laid the platform for the Green Machine to strike with a first blow. Centre Matsimoko uh, displayed great skills as he flicked a pass to winger Harley Smith Shields, who scored in the 11th minute. As, an errors, as errors crept in, Canberra kept Seagulls at bay with Ola Katua denied a try due to obstruction. The Sam Williams penalty extended the underdog's advantage before Bailey Simonson, uh, Simonson even crossed in the last in the left corner to put them in command after 32 minutes. As expected, the Seagulls came out in the second half with renewed energy and scored after three minutes as Ola Katua um, barged over from a close range following a devastating Suli break. Still, the tense battle continued, but cracks emerged for Canberra after the nickel cost that seemed the unfortunate error. Manly touched down through Morgan Harper on the pass uh, on the following play as Cher Cherry Evans boldly kicks and the bounce sat up for Jason Saab, who basketball passed back inside to his centre. This time Manley seized the moment to hit the front in the 63rd minute and Cherry Evans placed the cute grubber that was plucked by a rampaging Kurt Sorensen, uh, Sorinen even, en route to the in goal. Cherry Evans composed Claw to slot a field goal as has been the case for many times in his story career was the crucial point Oh, some news coming in from Canberra Raiders as they have sacked centre Curtis Scott following his latest indiscretion. Scott has had trouble, uh, trouble time in the capital with the action taken less than two seasons into a four year deal. So in other words he's had his contract ripped up halfway through his contract. The centre had not played in the NRL since round 12 after an incident at a Canberra nightclub saw him charged by police with assault, a costly incident which yielded a $15,000 fine and a three game ban. Canberra believed that the incident was the final straw in a string of issues involving Scott with the 23 year old accused of bringing the club into the dispute. Canberra board have said the, the board of directors today have decided to terminate the contract of Curtis Scott with immediate effect. 
The Milk Board's con the statement continued, uh, which they released on Monday. The board carefully considered the statements made at the show cars hearing with Curtis on August the 17th and the material supplied afterward. The board decided that Curtis's prior behaviour and recent assault charge has brought the club into disrepute and they could not ignore this and the responsibilities that his NRL contract entails. The board has said um, the club will continue to support Scott's ongoing rehabilitation and it will be in contact with the NRL welfare in this regard. But there may be another incident that um, the Amber Raiders have put down in this review as one of the straws that um, broke the camera back. As it's alleged that a punch up with teammate John Bateman last year was one of the number of reasons behind Catholic sacking uh, of Curtis Scott, the troubled centre. Senior News Corp journalist Phil Rothfield broke the story on Monday night, hours after the Raiders ended the contracts prematurely, on the grounds of bringing the club into disrepute. Scott had recently been stood down since being charged with assault and by punching a man in a Canberra um, nightclub. Even though the police was never involved, though this was there on the rap sheet that we didn't know about, according to, um, to the reporter, uh, Red Rothfield. He continued, it wasn't the reason why John Bateman went home to England last year, but it was a very serious incident. Uh, Curtis Scott contacted them up the next day and told them what happened, but he was injured. He had misbehaved. There was no police charges, so it didn't go to the integrity unit. It obviously contributed heavily to his sacking. The 23 year old has a history of off field trouble. On the Australia Day long weekend last year, Scott was arrested and pepper sprayed by New South Wales police officers as he lay asleep under a tree in Sydney's Moor Park. He was charged with seven offences over the incident, but they were later all dismissed and he sued the New South Wales police for the arrest. Regardless, his Raiders career is officially over. The Australian report Scott's lawyer, Sam Macedone, is considering launching legal action against the Raiders for unlawful dismissal. Rothwell backed up the suggestion on NRL 360 saying, I think he will sue. Panthers coach Ivan Cleary says that his team had another year or two to find if they're to challenge for the title after overcoming South Sydney 25 points to 12 on Friday night. A kicking masterclass from Cleary and two pieces of magic uh, from Paul Momirovsky helped end the Rabbit Hole's 10 game winning streak ahead of a likely rematch in week one of the finals. Having flogged South 56 points to 12 in Dubbo in round 11, the Panthers were made to work much harder at Suncorp Stadium and again Cleary's fingerprints were all over this victory. In the second game back from a shoulder injury, Cleary tormented former teammate John Mansour in the air as the Panthers flexed their premiership muscles to stay within reach of uh, Melbourne on the ladder. Uh, the battle between 2nd and 3rd place and the Telstra Premiership ladder lived up to expectations with Panthers forced to come from behind after South Sydney jumped to a 12 0 lead. Cleary floated bombs um, at Mansour and, uh, and uh, fullback Latrell Mitchell and had them bamboozled in the second half after Momirovsky set up two tries through his own efforts off the boot to swing the momentum. Mansour left the field late in the match after allowing a third kick to bounce before being collected with an accidental knee from Jerome uh, Luai. 
it was an unhappy night for his former uh, against his former club Mansour. The Panthers mentor said that the plan wasn't to target Mansour. The second half drained the rabbit holes who came up firing through the likes of Damian Cook and Cameron Murray but failed to regain on top remain on top throughout the match when under pressure. Adam Reynolds produced one of the best 40-60 kicks ever seen uh, to help the rabbit hole strike twice. But the Panthers hit the accelerator through Stephen Crichton, switching to fullback, following an unfortunate head knock to Dylan Edwards. Momirovsky swiftly to, uh, switched to the uh, to the wing and paid off immediately dividends, with the utility player providing two clever kicks back in field to set up Cleary for Penrith's opening try in the 31st minute, and also Crichton for the second on the stroke of half time. A controlling effort from Cleary's side in the second half shows signs of the same side which proved near unstoppable at the start of the year before the representative period and injuries halted the momentum. Mid-season recruits Tavita Pangai Jr made a successful club debut for the side in another positive for, Nate, uh, for Ivan Cleary who is expected to welcome back James Fisher Harris next week. Pangai Jr. got through 28 minutes in the middle after eight weeks between matches and followed his recent and following his recent withdrawal from the side due to personal reasons. And that's the report for Henry. Uh, only one thing to say on that, Colin Matangi has been charged with a crusher tackle in that game. So the disciplinary panel will be looking into that. Jake Clifford had no regrets in his mid-season transfer to Townsville to, uh, from Townsville to Newcastle after spearheading the Knights 22 points to 12 defeat of Canterbury that all but secure their place in the finals. Clifford, who made the move in round 12 after the Cowboy sound Tom Dearden from Brisbane, scored a try and laid on two others as 7th place Knights claimed their 4th consecutive win against the Brave Bulldogs. With a 4 point buffer between Newcastle and other teams still in contention for the finals, 7th place Knights just need a win or a draw against the Titans or Broncos to ensure a playoff berth as they have a minus 131 differential. Newcastle coach Adam O'Brien will focus on improving the team's attack, but star fullback Kaelin Ponya was only made 11 appearances this season. Halfback Mitchell Pearce has played 8 matches and Clifford has worn the, jer the Knights jersey on only 9 occasions. Significantly, Clifford had point partner Pierce in the halves in five matches, and Newcastle have won all five. Knights captain Jaden Brayley described Clifford as the best player in the win, and O'Brien praised him after the 23-year-old shot on a lot of composure. Knights led 10-0 at half-time, but Canterbury could not con uh, could consider themselves unlucky after a bomb try by Corey Allen and a number of tough refereeing calls against them. However, the Bulldogs also committed five first half errors, conceding four penalties, while second row of Corey Waddell was placed on report twice for a late tackle on Mitch Barnett and another incident in which he tried to rip off <laughs> Caelan Ponga's headgear. The difference between the teams in the opening 40 minutes was the attacking direction of Pierce and Clifford, which each laid on a try would definitely place grubber kicks. J uh, Jacob Safita um, scored his, op his side's opening try in the 10th minute after Barnett taps back a Bruce, uh, Pierce grubber kick before it bounced over the dead ball line and there were no Canterbury defenders chasing to prevent the Knights prop from grounding the ball. Newcastle's winger um, Enari Tuale 
um, scored his seventh try in four weeks when he swooped on a perfectly placed rubber from Clifford behind Canterbury's right edge and Will Hopoate and Jaden uh, Ockambo in the 27th minute. The Bulldogs appear to have hit back just four minutes later when Allen won the race to a grubber by 5'8 Lachlan Lewis. That bounced awkwardly for Ponga, but replays showed the Queensland Origins representative had not on trying to go uh, grab the ball. However, Canterbury overcame a bad start to the second half when Carl Flanagan attempted to trap the ball with his foot from the kickoff and it propelled towards the chasing Knights in a narrow, uh, to narrow the deficit to 10 points to 6 in the 45th minute. Melbourne bound fullback Nick Meany was the try scorer after reverse grubber's kick by Lewis into vacant space. Uh, by Lewis into vacant space in the uh, Newcastle in goal. The try sparked Knights into action though, and Clifford extended their lead to 16 6 when he dummied and ran between Waddell and Flanagan to score with barely a hand being laid uh, on him in the 58th minute. The Newcastle 5 8 then backs up a break by Connor Wat uh, Watson to send centre. For Bradman Best racing away to finish a 65th minute uh, meter try in the 62nd minute. However, Canterbury's lone prop Ryan James kept his upside hopes alive when he crashed over nine minutes later. Ockenbore then latched onto a cross field Lewis kick to score a stunning try with 37 seconds remaining on the clock but time ran out for the Bulldogs. Ockenberg's stunning try was that, because a crossfield kick came over into the in-goal area, it bounced once about a metre, two minute metres away from the uh, sideline, and was going to roll out, uh, on the, well, bounce out on the full, uh, after that, sorry. But before the ball had time to go over the line, Ockenbro gets the ball down with one hand in the try, in the in goal area, just about. So close. But it was stunning how he got there just in time to do all that. In. It's unfortunate though that the Bulldogs were down to. So, we're on to the Eels versus the Cowboys, and Eels coach Brad Arthur doubts Mick Acevo will play again this season after the Wingers suffered a suspected MCL injury on Saturday night's win over the Cowboys. It was a relieving 32 points to 16 result as halfback Mitchell Moses stood up to ensure Parramatta snapped a four match losing streak. And Arthur labelled the performance Mitch's best running game of the year after the number seven tallied three try assists and kicked beautifully. It was it may not appear appease the doubters, but Arthur said the style of the victory wasn't of much importance after a lean trot that has resulted in Eels slipping from the top four before the finals. Uh, Sivo had to be helped from the field, unfortunately, by two trainers in the 25th minute after being twisted awkwardly in a two-man tackle. The coach will hope he isn't forced into making more changes after okay, Joe, Joey Lusick uh, was placed on report for a shoulder to the head of Cowboys halfback Tom Dearden as he implied, as he applied kick pressure. Hard working luck, Nathan Brown could also come under scrutiny after being penalised for a crusher tackle in the first half. Parramatta are now on 30 points, level with Roosters, who they play next Sunday, and the Seagulls, but remain sixth on the differential. Arthur acknowledged that they'll need to improve sharply with, um, with clashes against the Storm and Panthers prior to the playoffs. It was also a somewhat shaky start with Nathan Brown making an error in the first set before a try was bombed when Wacker Blake 
uh, streaked down the touchline and threw a forward pass to Dylan Brown. But Parramatta enjoyed more success shifting the, uh, down their left edge with Seaboard dumping the ball back inside for Blake to collect the bounce and touchdown in the 8th minute. That was backed up by Moses um, and some Moses magic as he took advantage of a disjointed defence, dumbing and zipping away before linking up with uh, Will uh, Penicini uh, who crossed uh, to score his first NRL try to make it 8 0. Queensland stuck to the task, however, and appeared to have eaten into the margin when um, Amiso Tabua Fidel. Uh, found the line, but the bunker spotted a knock on by the young gun. Moments after Sivo exited the field due to the knee injury, promising Cowboys second rower, uh, Liam Lukey um, stormed onto a short ball from fellow forward Mitch Dunn and got his team on the board. Moses put Shane Lane, or Sean Lane even, over the line in the 29th minute to reassert the Eels' dominance, but it took a while to secure the win. They began to pull away when Will Smith crossed in the 56 minutes after Brock Junior Paulo skillfully tapped on a drop bomb by Queensland youngster Dejan Arce. In the following set, Moses speared this uh, Steeden to Hayes Dunster who tiptoed down the paint and placed a lovely inside kick that um, Clint Gutherson snaffled to score. A rally from Queensland kept the contest interesting, but Todd Payton's troops were consigned to their 10th consecutive loss as Dylan Brown pounced on a drop ball to score in the 17th. So it was an interesting day and another day of injuries I'm afraid as Ronaldo Molitano suffered a broken jaw as his Sharks surged past the West Tigers in a 50 point 20 win that coach Josh Hane said was flattering. Ronaldo careered away to, in a 9 tries to 4 performance to extinguish a 13th place Tigers hopes of a final place but Hane felt his teams weren't quite as dominant as the scoreboard suggests. Regardless, he was thrilled after the Sharks leapfrogged the Titans into my spot on points differential, and playmaker Matt uh, Moylan had, success had a successful army off after returning from a seven-week calf injury. But the injury to Mulatalo, uh, who bagged a double and selflessly gave up his hat-trick by passing to Luke Metcalf, was a dampener. The 21 year old still fans, fans at Rockingham's Brown Park, even gifting his boots to a youngster as he helped as he held an ice pack to his jaw with tears welling, presumably because his season got over. Granola confirmed on Sunday that Montano had Montalo had a broken jaw and that he was scheduled for surgery in Brisbane Hospital. Will Kennedy and halves Metcalf and uh, Braden Trindle uh, contributed to some champagne attack in football for the Sharks and Moylan's 19 minute stint to finish the match created Metcalf's second try with a vintage bust with another bright spot, which was another bright spot. The Tigers had opened the scoring through uh, Michael Chika, but Granola quickly took control and led 16 points to 4 at half time. Extended to the margins of 34 points to 10 midway through the second term before Tigers briefly looked like mounting a comeback. But as there were prop that as was their problem all afternoon, some meek defensive efforts, in particular through the middle, allowed the Sharks to cruise home with Kennedy and Katoa also completing try doubles. Um, so it wasn't a good day for the West Tigers, and on the injury front, uh, Ronaldo Molotalo is a good strike weapon for Ronaldo, and if they have any hopes of finals rugby and wins, they would probably need those such players so that they can get over the line.
We'll have to see how they do in the finals, if they get. So it was an interesting day for the Roosters as a knockout performance from James Tedesco returned the Roosters to the top four and helped restore their heavyweight reputation while all but ending the Dragons final assault. The Roosters led 14-0 late into the first half when they had to endure a three-try comeback from the Red V who claimed the lead midway through the second half before the Roosters produced a stunning four-try burst to win. 40 points to 22. Tedesco set up his, his side's first three tries and four all up and also racked up more than 300 yards in goal forward with line breaks equating to three of them and 12 tackle bursts. The Roosters hope of finishing in the top four hinged on next Friday's clash with traditional rival South Sydney at Suncorp Stadium and coach Trent Robinson said his injury ravaged side would keep punching above its waist. Its weight even. Sunday's impressive win came despite the club's injury woes getting even worse with Adam Kieran failing a HIA uh, contact um, assessment after contact suffered in the 12th minute casting a huge doubt over his availability to face the Rabbitohs next Friday and off a five day turnaround. Back row Nathan Butcher also came from the field shortly after the break with a knee injury while um, Soyisua Tao Keo uh, was taken uh, for a HIA assessment um, seven minutes from full time. I know I'm saying HIA which is a, a is the assessment and then assessment that's a bit redundant bear with me. Booker Sam Verrills, Winger Dale Copley and prop uh, Jared Wire Hargreaves also struggled with various injuries at various stages. Uh, Rabbits have felt the game was important to give Lachlan Lamb a start in the halves and managed Sam Walker's workload by starting him off the bench but was non-committal to about whether it was going to be a feature going forward for the start, uh, for the Roosters. The Dragons had some joy through the middle part of the middle part of the contest, while makeshift hooker Jaden Sullivan doing an excellent job alongside rookie 5 8 uh, Talatao Amone. The Dragons showed some incredible defensive resolve in the opening 10 minutes to shut down four Roosters try scoring chances, including a wonderful cover tackle from the uh, Malign Dufty and an in-goal strip from Caden Ellis on Isaac Lewis. There should have been an open score after a, a break for the uh, for the Dragons uh, after breaking into space, but Michaeli uh, Ravawara Ravalawa last pass to Dufty went forward. The rest of the half was James Tedesco's show as the Roosters captain set up three straight tries and ran over 200 metres for the half. The Jared Wahera offload, uh, Hargreaves offload even, uh, started things in the 12th minute with Tedesco breaking into space and setting up Egan Butcher, who was fresh on the field with Kieran going off. Just four minutes later, a long range break from Lachlan Lamb put the Roosters on the attack and Tedesco spotted an overlap out wide and fired a cutout pass to Dale Gobley to score. Lamb and Tedesco combined well in the 34th minute to put standing centre Titili Tupanoa uh, over with, the, with his 12th try of the season, taking him to the top of the club's try scoring uh, list for this season. The Roosters were stunned moments before the break after Tufty burst onto a Norman short ball and had the ball stripped by Tedesco in the act of scoring with Maguire pouncing to make it 14 points to 6 at the break. A superb pass by, from Zach Lomax sent uh, Rava Lawa on a free run to the line in the 49th minute and 3 minutes later Jack Bird marked a bombing goal. Uh, and raced 
to the 20. From there, he, Lomax and Matt v, uh, Vigai uh, combined to go the length. They led for just four minutes before a lovely piece of skill from Sam Walker set up Daniel Tapal in the corner with the winger making it a five minute double when he out jumped uh, Ravalawa to a Hutchinson bomb in the 61st minute. A hot stepping walker embarrassed the Dragons goal line defence in the 65th minute and Drew Hutchinson added a well earned try in the 70th minute to effectively end the contest at 36 points to 16. The Dragons however did score late as Sullivan crossed the late off the Billy Burns line break setting up uh, set up by an effort from Corey Norman before Tapao bagged his hat trick right as the final siren sounded set up by who else? James Oh, that's a final game that we come to on this Sunday a game at some cop stadium as Anthony Milford has kicked the Warriors final hopes to the curb in one of his last Broncos outings with his oft maligned boot proving the difference in the 24 points to 22 thriller coming to the end of his multi-million dollar lead uh, deal uh, which was long term the former Broncos pinup proved the difference on a sunny sun cop afternoon uh, scoring a match-winning try and laying on two more in his first run-on since May. What might have been for the Broncos was main playing what twice over throughout the most entertaining of contests as Milford starred and at one time Broncos whiskered Reese Walsh looked to have liked and most likely to keep the Warriors campaign alive. In the end Walsh was wayward off the team. He only landed one of five conversion attempts, and that was telling, before his commendable final minute two point field goal attempt just one wide. Milford is joining the Rabbitohs next year for roughly a third of his current uh, Broncos salary, but by cashing in on a rare return to the Broncos scrum base, uh, coach Kevin Walters went emphatic but asked if uh, Milford. Um, would stay there for the final two games of the career. My word he does, particularly on tonight's errands. Best he's played in a long time, Seca. After the Broncos wrestled back a 12 points to 4 half-time deficit after turning it into the, an unlikely two-point lead, Milford struck not once, but twice to finish off their final hopes, they being the uh, Zealand Warriors. First, it was a clever chip for Tessie Newey uh, to tow ahead once more. The kick to kick lead up, only trumpeted by Albert Kelly's audacious snatch of the steadon from Daly Watani Zelesniak to reclaim the lead. Looking to keep the unlikeliest of final fights alive, the Warriors return serve through Watani Zelesniak for a 18 points to 18 scoreline. Milford and the Warriors, the second rower Josh Curran, was, were getting well acquainted with some argy bargy after the score. Milford had the last laugh though, uh, with a well deserved four pointer of his own, once again laid on by the boots that caught so much criticism from Broncos fans and pundits alike. A 73rd minute bomb was battered down by uh, Corey Oates and then Herbie Far Farnworth for Milford to burrow over with 7 minutes to play. The 24 points to 18 lead uh, appeared to have the Broncos home and host uh, until Ewan Aitken was awarded a contentious late try, the bunker ruling that he had beaten Xavier Coates to put down after several views of each place hands nearly simultaneously grounding the ball. Oh, she's shanked conversion from out wide meant the controversy did not overshadow a superb afternoon of football. 
though the warrior's final hopes have likely faded away with it. A top 8 spot can still be reached with a calculator by Nathan Brown's nomadic side, but they now rely on other results going their way and it appears a bridge too far. They at least go out with frills and spills aplenty. The rarity in this contest that it almost took 20 minutes for either side to fire a shot on the scoreboard. Not until male third point to bomb high that both Walsh and Coates swung and missed was Coates able to trouble the scorers when the, he scrambled to the ground and the ground the bouncing ball. As Milford grew in confidence, so too did his influence in turn and in turn his lead. Seven minutes later, in the, he made a right side shift uh, sing when he collected a low ball to step inside Adam Poppins uh, before his sending Coates over with a looping pass. A Walsh burst out of what was not, was not much from dummy half helped the Warriors to fire back within moments through Marcelo Fire. A fifth tackle switch back through the rook required a desperate try saving effort from Aku to keep Milford off the score sheet. By the end of the next set, Raffery Mac uh, Ketchin was referred to referring to a Humdinger to the bunker. A try fit for Stephen Bradbury's uh, mantelpiece, undone by Iku's botched grounding after half a dozen Broncos had failed to attempt to grasp the ball. The veteran centre made amends after the break with a delicately dink kick into the in goal area. This time, nailed the put down to trip uh, Brisbane's lead to 12 points to 8. When Josh Curran spun from, uh, through from the sharp range, the lead was suddenly a two point deficit, setting up a nail biting half power that had just about everything, not at least from Mill. So that's it ladies and gentlemen for another video, thank you so much for watching, please remember to like, subscribe and share this video worldwide, um, I need your backing, I need you to get the word out, thank you to those that have already done it, much appreciated, if you wish to keep this, this channel going, I'm going to do it continuously until I can't do it anymore, but I'd like your support, I'd like people to get the word out great to have the people watch what they do and all the supporters that I have. So in the meantime, stay safe, all the best, and I'll see you in the next video.